say you're reading a book chapter or maybe an entire book and um, you would like to understand the contents of this chapter very deeply you want to thoroughly understand the contents and you'd also like to memorize the knowledge as much as possible a very effective way one very effective way to do this is to draw a concept map of the contents that you just read or studied in this video I am going to explain some techniques to draw effective concept maps so that you can better communicate your knowledge. Let me also point out why concept map drawing is effective. If we associate what we have just learned with what we already have in our memory, the new idea that we just learned becomes very easy to understand and recall. So this is why with a concept map you will be able to associate the new knowledge that you learned with uh, the knowledge that you already have in your mind. Let me start by describing what a concept is. A concept is any piece of knowledge, a process, or an object. This is in the context of drawing a concept map. Now a concept map is a conceptual diagram that depicts relationships between concepts. So say for example, um, in this concept map, which is a visual summary of what a concept map is, um, you can see that um, here's the first piece of concept. This is the overall what a concept map is. Here's another piece of concept. And this connector makes a connection between association between these two, for example, it says to draw an effective concept map, we have to get rid of dark background and borders. So how do we start drawing a concept map? The first thing we must do when drawing a concept map is to list out the most important key terms, key phrases, or key processes um, in the topic that we are studying. And then we should list them down somewhere and then start um, connecting them one by one and it's a dynamic um, graph as you are drawing it you first try to understand one concept link it to other concepts and then understand another concept link it to existing concepts and at the beginning once you have read the chapter or a content once you can very quickly draw a rough draft concept map and then um, you will know which concepts are clear to you and which are not. And then you go back to the content, revise your understanding, and then grow your concept map and make it richer. A concept map can serve three purposes. The first purpose is demonstration. That is, you can use it to demonstrate what you already learned. The second purpose is communication. You can also use it to communicate your understanding of a concept or a topic to somebody else. The third purpose is a reference. Once you draw a concept map, you can always come back to it to revise or to recall what you had known or learned about a topic. Now, what exactly is an effective concept map? A concept map is effective if it does best what it's supposed to do. If you are drawing a concept map to demonstrate your understanding, say for example in an assignment or so, then if a concept map best demonstrates your knowledge, then it is an effective concept map. If a concept map is supposed to communicate a concept, maybe a complex concept in a simple way, then if it does that best, then it's effective. Similarly, if it's detailed enough for you to help recalling, then it becomes um, a best reference. Now, the first thing that we have to understand when we draw a concept map is to understand that a concept map is more than a visual note. Here's an example of a visual note. A visual note may have um, you know, a several ideas. Here's the first idea, maybe another idea, and then maybe another idea. So a visual note may have uh, several ideas put together. A concept map is not a visual note because in a concept map 
these ideas or these concepts that we have in a visual node should be connected. They have to be connected. Um, unconnected concepts, in a way, hint that you haven't assimilated or synthesized all the ideas that you have learned. So for a concept map to be meaningful, all the concepts must be linked and all the links must be labeled. All the associations must be labeled very clearly. Now, labeled connections are very critical in a concept map. If the uh, concepts are not um, linked, associated, and described very clearly, that is the associations between the concepts, if they are not described very clearly, then a concept map becomes very poor. Now, we also have to remember that when drawing a concept map, and, and as we try to connect these concepts, we might uh, be tempted to keep the concepts where they are and then draw lines like these, which are like, you know, which run across other concepts, run over other concepts, and um, uh, like, you know, that are not straight. Uh, this also makes concept maps ineffective because um, we think visually, when we imagine things visually, we would like to see similar ideas, similar concepts uh, very close together in the physical space. So for that reason, um, ideas that are similar or connected to each other should also be physically close together. So this idea of connecting ideas through like, you know, these curved lines and lines that run over other concepts are not good. Also, another common mistake when drawing concept maps is to um, use dark borders and um, dark backgrounds. For example, in this concept map, you can see that the backgrounds of these concept nodes are very dark. We also have uh, dark borders around the blocks. When you look at a concept map like this, the first thing that your eye catches is not the text. Instead, it is these square blocks that are in the concept map. Now, if these colorful blocks or these colors are really important, that's a different thing. But mostly, it's the text that is the most important thing in your concept map. So for that reason, these dark backgrounds and, um, and, and um, thick borders in the concepts, um, concept nodes should be um, avoided. Instead, we should use light backgrounds where text still remains the most important, the focus in your concept map. Whenever possible, dark colors should, be, should not be used besides using them, except for using them in text. When you are drawing a concept map, if the all the fonts in the concept map in your concept map are of the same size and same color then you can make your concept map more effective by improving it for example in this concept map we can see that all the fonts are of the same size for example the details of this node the details of this node all of them are in the same size we can improve such concept maps by reducing the size of the details so that the big picture still is there when we look at the concept map from um, a helicopter view or when we like you know look at it at once at the beginning and if we leave all the um, details to a smaller font then we can always zoom in to see to understand a particular node or a particular reason in more detail so font size can be used intelligently to add details to a concept map and still maintain the big picture in a concept map Another common um, issue when drawing a concept map that we run into is deciding which node should be, what, what content should be a node and what should be a connection. For example, here in this small block of concept map, I have decided to use visual node as one of the nodes, uh, nodes and then add connections as another node. So then the, um, as we read it, so this concept map is not a, visual note um, and to make it a concept map add connection so this is a, a correct concept map similarly i can also redraw this such that 
um, add connections, this node becomes a connection such that now I say a visual node is a visual summary, it is not a concept map, and add connections and labels to um, for them to make concept map. So then this is also a concept map, um, a, a, a equally effective concept map. So deciding what is a node and what is a connection, it totally depends on you. That is exactly where you can be creative. In fact, you can start a particular way and as you enrich your concept map and as you grow it, as you refine it, you can often switch um, the connectors to nodes, nodes to connectors, and um, uh, make your concept map gradually more effective. Another important point about making concept maps more effective is um, to add images to concept maps. Now, um, it is very important that we add images or we embed images to our concept map and not vice versa, uh, not adding text to images. When we see images in, when, in our reading, we are suddenly in, in watching mode, not reading mode. So the intuition here is to use images or icons in a concept map to aid uh, the understanding of the text, to help a reader visualize the contents of the text. Images should not be big and large and distracting such that reading the text becomes boring. Text should still remain important. So whenever we are embedding images in, in a concept map, images should be kept small. They should be like icons which basically aid the imagination or the visuals that come to our mind when we are reading the concept map. When we are drawing concept map, oftentimes we are tempted to draw hierarchical charts, concept maps in the form of a hierarchical chart that looks something like this. Now this is not wrong, but um, creating hierarchical charts like this always is not a really creative or brilliant way of drawing a concept map. One problem with uh, hierarchical type concept maps is that one section of the concept map, which is very close to another concept in the concept map, may have no conceptual relationship between them. So in a way, one concept which is unrelated to another concept may be interfering in each other's space. So for that reason, sometimes hierarchical and organizational type concept maps are okay, but most of the times it's better to scatter them all around such that logically similar concepts stay close together in a 2D space. Now, if you are drawing a concept map for an assignment or um, some activity, and if you are given a list of topics to cover, you should not leave topics out. In your concept map, you should include all the topics that are supposed to include. And uh, if some of the topics or ideas that are, you have put in a concept map are not clear to you and you cannot connect them um, effectively or accurately to other concepts, you should go back and understand those concepts well enough to, to be able to effectively connect them to others. Um, we should not draw very shallow concept maps uh, and, and leave out topics that may be very important to the overall concept map assignment that, that you are assigned. Please click on the link below to learn more about how to draw effective concept maps. Thank you.